Some ideas in computer science are so easy to grasp and yet so useful that it is a shame if they are not introduced early and emphasized often. Iterators are one of those ideas. Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. I'm covering the theory of Python, which includes the Python language and computer science. I'm also covering a Python tutorial for beginners. Unfortunately, some languages implement iterators in a strange or almost useless way, and so the true power of iterators isn't completely obvious. Python is not one of those languages. In Python, you'll be using iterators for almost everything you do when it comes to sequences or series. In addition, once you understand iterators, you'll be only a short step and a skip away from understanding full-blown functional programming, comprehensions, and truly understanding the depth of the for statement. Buckle up, put your hard hats on, let's dive in. Before we begin, let's review. You should know what functions are in Python. You should also know about the if statement. and while loops, as well as exceptions. If you need to review these topics, I've already made videos on these subjects. I'll wait for you to come back. In this lecture, we're going to cover what an iterator is, what an iterable is, the iter function, as well as the next function. The next lecture will cover generators. Generators are really interesting. What is an iterator? Iterators have the next method, underscore, underscore, next. We'll cover how to write this function and what it means when we cover object-oriented programming in Python. Iterators iterate across a sequence. That sequence could be in memory, but it doesn't need to be. The iterator remembers where it is, what the next value is, and how to get to it if the sequence is in memory. Some iterators can also generate values in its sequence by a function. For instance, you might imagine the Fibonacci series being generated rather than stored in memory. Iterators can be called in the next method. We'll cover that shortly. Iterators are also returned in the iter function, which we'll cover very shortly. Briefly, let's talk about what are iterables. The types of things that are iterables is really too numerous to list, but many things, many of the object types in Python are iterable. This includes tuples, lists, sets, dictionaries, strings, bytes, files, streams, such as from a network socket or from a local running process, and as well as many functions can generate sequences. Some values you might know already are not iterable. For instance, int, float, complex, even though it has two numbers, bools, and of course, none. You can't iterate across these, although they're typically returned as items in an iteration sequence. Let's cover the iter function in detail now. Iter always returns an iterator. If it can't return an iterator, it'll raise a type error instead. Remember, if you pass an iterator into iter, you'll get the same iterator back. When you call iter with one object, it will do its best to figure out how to create an iterator that will iterate across that object. The object should support the special method iter. We'll cover more about how to write this method in object-oriented programming. If it doesn't have iter, it should have at least get item. Again, we'll cover this in OO programming. But this get item must support integers. So it's going to try to pass in 0, 1, 2, and 3 and see what it gets. All the sequences in Python support this. You can also call iter with two parameters. The first parameter is a callable, a function. And the second parameter is a sentinel value. This iterator will continuously call function for every item in the sequence until it sees the sentinel value returned. When the sentinel value is returned, it'll raise stop iteration. I've never used this in practice, but I see some use for it. There's different types of functions you can use. A trivial example is a function that returns the same value. 
This would just render the same results as an iterator. Maybe you rely on some non-local variable, in which case you would need a creator function that defines the function with non-local variables, or maybe it relies on globals. In this case, the function, even if you had two iterators with the same function, they would be returning the same state. Or perhaps there's some external thing, a stream, a network socket, a file, an external program, a device. Along with the iter function is the next function. The next function takes a single iterator as an argument. It returns, as you might expect, the next value in the iteration. If there are no more values, it will raise the stop iteration exception. Stop iteration is an example of an exception that isn't particularly exceptional. Everybody expects that finite sequences will have an end. But when you're writing your code, it's really trivial to write code that pretends there will always be a next value. When this exception is raised, it continues with the following code. You can also call next with two parameters. The first parameter is the iterator, and the next value is a default value. It will return default when there's no more values in the sequence. I've never used this, and honestly, there's better ways to do this behavior. Note that iterators all support the underscore underscore next method. However, it's considered rude to call that. It used to be that you had to call the next method on the iterator in Python. This is no longer supported in Python 3.7. Let's do some examples. This iterator, i, is going to iterate across the three values in a tuple. We haven't covered tuples yet, but this is pretty easy. When you call next on i first, it will return the first item, one. When you call next on i, it will return the next value, and then the next. When you call next the, the fourth time, it will raise stop iteration. And of course, if you continuously call next on i, it'll keep raising stop iteration. You can see how putting these next statements inside of a while loop and trying and catching the stop iteration exception can allow you to iterate across any kind of sequence. The range function is an important function in Python. Range comes in three flavors. The first flavor takes one parameter, stop. It is a sequence from zero all the way to stop, but not including stop. The second flavor, you can specify start and stop. This represents a sequence starting at the starting value and ending at the stopping value, but not including the stopping value. And the third flavor, you can specify the step, start, stop, and step. Note that range is not returning an iterator. It's returning an iterable. So if you want an iterator, you would have to use the iter function on the returned range. As an example, let's say we specify r is the range starting at 10, going up to 30, and stepping by 5. We create an iter for that range, and we call next on that iterator. This will return 10. When we call next again, it will give you 15, because it's stepping by 5. When you call it again, it will give you 20, and again, will give you 25. If you call it again, it will not return 30. Instead, it will raise stop iteration. In Python, sequences or ranges specified here or in slices start with the number and return that first, but they do not include the last number. That's a consistent pattern. Thank you for watching this video on the theory of Python by Real Physics. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord or support me on Patreon. Links are in the description below. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye bye.